We're used to looking at the world from the top down. We keep discovering smaller and smaller by breaking systems down to glean more insight into compositional structure and function, but what if, instead, we flipped that ideology completely and started to investigate and engineer from the bottom up, literally creating every piece of the system ourselves? Bottom-up synthetic biology does just that, starting with the cell. In a recent field known as microfluidics is one avenue that synthetic biology has used to make artificial cells, which may eventually end up in our bodies. I'm Christopher Coyne, and I'm a junior here at the University of Michigan, majoring in mechanical engineering. I spent the summer doing research as part of the summer undergraduate research and engineering program with Professor Alan Liu. My project was aimed at using microfluidic devices to produce structure called vesicles, which are simply small, bubble-like structures which can be used for lots of applications. We particularly wanted to generate vesicles with a single phospholipid bilayer, which is one of the main challenges. So what motivates this research? Well, lots of things. Vesicles can be used as simple model systems to study certain membrane properties, as drug delivery systems, as the foundation for artificial cells, and a variety of other powerfully impacting ways. In the Lou Lab, I spent the majority of my time using microfluidic jetting to generate giant unilamellar vesicles, or GUVs. Unilamellar simply means that these vesicles have a single lamella, or membrane, and giant puts them in the range of tens to hundreds of microns. So here's how microfluidic jetting, or microjetting, works. Liquid from a piezoelectric inkjet device is jetted at high speed against a supported lipid bilayer. The fluid pulse first forms a deformation in the bilayer, which eventually grows until it finally pinches off to form a spherical vesicle. It's like blowing soap bubbles from a soap film. The lipid bilayer is established using a special infinity-shaped chamber design. First, lipid is added to the entire chamber. Then, a drop of glucose is added to the outside of each half of the chamber, which pushes the lipid to the middle and forms a lipid bilayer where the glucose drops meet. The inkjet nozzle can then be introduced through a small hole drilled inside of the chamber, is carefully next to the bilayer, then vesicle generation is possible. The inkjet device is attached to a filter and a syringe, which is loaded with the jetting solution. This whole assembly is then mounted on a custom-built stage, which has independent XY movement of the sample holder and XYZ movement of the inkjet. The inkjet is then connected to a piezo actuator. Due to the piezoelectric effect, when electricity is passed through this actuator, it creates an electric field and causes the material to change shape, and in our case, contract a jet solution. The actuator, in turn, is controlled by a high-frequency amplifier, which sends pre-programmed electrical signals to the piezo, and therefore triggers the jet to produce a jet stream. Now, if we take a closer look at the jet stream, we'll notice a vortex shape. A trapezoidal bipolar wave from the amplifier, repeated at high frequency, causes many pulses to be pushed out in rapid succession by the inkjet, which build on top of each other to form that vortex shape. Now, this is microfluidic jetting, which means we're dealing volumes on the microscale, so all experimentation is carried out under a microscope. Each vesicle is also generated under 12 milliseconds. So a high-speed camera is used to image vesicle formation. So here's how it looks. You can see initial bilayer deformation growing to a critical state until finally the bilayer snaps back, releasing the spherical vesicle. And there you have GUVs produced by microfluidic jetting. This technique is a great breakthrough because it easily lets researchers control the size of the vesicle, what goes into the vesicle, what composes the membrane, and even how to incorporate proteins and make an asymmetric membrane. But what does this mean on a bigger scale? Well, simple models are great, but as vesicle models grow in complexity with techniques like microfluidic jetting, building blocks down the line that use vesicles as a foundation more closely mimic nature. Remember, the goal of an artificial cell is to function exactly as a natural cell would, so it would be functionally indistinguishable even though it may look quite different. Now, microjetting brings that aim a little closer to reality in a very elegant way.